European debt, um, uh, this has got better. Uh, it's, um, that, doesn't, that, that shouldn't be a surprise. I think a year ago I said it was going to hang around for a long time but was unlikely to end in catastrophe. And it has got better. And I can show you that that issue has got better because in the past year I've constructed a trouble index for Europe, uh, which I've modestly called the Chris Caton trouble index. Um, I, use it, I use it pretty much every day to look at uh, how Europe's going, and you can use it too. And it's very simple. If um, financial markets decide that you, a country, have a debt problem, they will still hold your debt. They'll just want to be compensated more for it. So your long-term interest rate will be bid up. So you can kind of look at long-term interest rates as an index of how financial markets perceive um, these countries, uh, how much trouble these countries are in. And here's a look. Um, up to about three months ago, here's a look. These aren't, aren't actually the long-term interest rates of these countries. They're actually the difference between the long-term interest rates and the German long rate. You just kind of take that out as a benchmark, if you like. Um, well, every number here is a forecast, and it's a forecast for GDP or economic output growth for this year, calendar year 2013. They're not mine. They're put together by panels of economists and analysts around the world. And there's so many numbers here because these panels update their forecasts every month. The, um, but back to the world, um, the, uh, as you see, um, uh, moderate growth expected this year. What about the Australian economy? This is our growth cycle, the yellow line. Um, for comparison purposes, the red line is the growth cycle for the US. Australian economists put this up because there has been a clear link in the past. Um, we're out of sync with them now, and we're probably not going to fall back into sync with them because they're not as important. Incidentally, and I made this point last year, you, you can see from this chart just the extent to which we dodged the GFC. Uh, the GFC was very minor in Australia. Looking forward, the bad news is um, that we've already done half that decline in our terms of trade, and there's probably more to come, number one. The good news is that nobody seriously thinks that, um, that the decline is going to be as sharp as it has been in the past. And of course, you know, we we saw you know, iron ore and coal prices drop significantly last year, and iron ore prices, as you know, have already come a long way back. What else is important? Well, inflation. Uh, the, um, I've made this point at least um, more than once in the past, that despite all the, you hear about the spiralling cost of living stories in Australia, the inflation has, in fact, been remarkably low lately. Um, the, in the year to the December quarter, which is where that vertical line comes down, um, both the headline inflation rate and the so-called underlying inflation rate, which strips out the volatile stuff, basically in the lower half of the Reserve Bank's target range, which is 2 to 3 per cent. Um, the, the message here from the point of view of monetary policy is that the Reserve Bank simply doesn't have to worry about inflation. When you look at retail in Australia, there's a view that um, uh, that uh, you know they're just being hammered by online um, uh, um, commerce, of course. But one of the big reasons why retail has been hammered, and I think I made this point last year, is that consumers have become more cautious. Um, uh, and um, the one manifestation of that caution is that um, is that uh, essentially they're no longer running up their debt relative to their income. And what that means is when they get income gains, interest rate cuts, etc., they repay the debt rather than go to the shops. The last time we cut rates, house prices had been falling rapidly uh, and they turned around and rose rapidly almost overnight. And we're cutting rates again, but nobody thinks house prices are about to take off. Um, and there are two reasons for that. Number one, we're not going to cut rates by 4%, which is what we did last time. And number two, there's still this nasty little feeling it's all a bit overcooked, isn't it? House prices in Australia are too high right now. We're in a bubble. We must be because people keep telling us this. Find the Australia line. <laughs> the perception that we're way out the top is, um, as you can see, not really supported by the data. Um, the, um, and uh, we've got a lot of company. Um, we still look expensive relative to a couple of major countries, it is true. The, um, and, uh, and across, not quite across the board, but in a number of countries, this line's gone up since mid, the mid-90s, hasn't it? Now, my outlook for um, economic growth over the next year or so, um, yeah, the um, economic growth in Australia is going to look quite low because we're going to lose the source of about half of that growth in recent years. Um, the mining investment boom's going to peak. And of course, if you lose half your growth, does your growth halve? 
And the answer to that is maybe not. Um, other stuff will pick up the slack. The uh, US is, the um, Reserve Bank has cut rates um, in order to facilitate that. It is possible that the exchange rate will fall. That will help. Um, in, the, in, in fact, I can't, I can't conceive, or as wrong as I've been about the exchange rate, and I'll come back to that, but um, I can't conceive of us getting through the peak in the mining boom without some downward pressure on the Australian dollar. Now, turning to the long term, I've gone back to the consensus forecasters and said, don't tell me about this year or next, tell me about the next 10. And we do this every year also. They've put Australia at the top of the list. Australia is expected to outgrow every other country on this list in the next 10 years. Just um, in summary then, uh, yeah, Eurozone debt's still a serious issue. Um, it's going to drag on for a long, long time. It's going to take them years to get to stabilise their debt to GDP ratios and bring this down. And while they're doing that, slow growth is the way. Is the way. We will always worry about China. We always should. And, but the reason is because it's been such a good story. The fiscal cliff issues have been delayed, but they haven't gone away. Um, the, uh, as, I, as I suggested early on, the Australian economy, moderate but unbalanced growth, led at first by mining investment, but the mining in boom will end, and it will end sometime this year. Cash rate, I think I'd change this to the cash rate will probably fall again. Um, or um, it's, um, it's, you know, it's not an absolute certainty by any means. The exchange rate's above fair value. The rest of the world's still on sale for Australians, and, um, and, I was, and uh, share markets are still slightly cheap, but they're, not, they're nowhere near the, the buy, screaming buy they were six months ago. I'll stop there and take any questions that you may have. Thank you.